Sri Lanka is now at a critical juncture. The pandemic has battered us and everyone is looking for change. But who will drive this transformation? We have answers for that. Change makers will feature Sri Lankans who will drive the country's transformation in the next five years. Everyone wants change in Sri Lanka, but the extent to which one is willing to travel to effect that change is a question. However, we have a very interesting person who is very inspired to make a change, to make a meaningful change in Sri Lanka through his own idea. He is Harinder Fonseca, founder of goodpeople.com. Thank you very much, Harinder, for joining. Uh, now, I had a very interesting uh, description about your operation. Say, if mainstream social media platforms are like junk food to the mind, your platform, Good People, is like uh, organic, healthy food. Organic is a tricky word these days, but <laughs> the idea is that it's like healthy food to the mind. Uh, can you give me a brief explanation about what you do with Good People and what... Uh, how, how it came into being. Sure. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, Good People is a social network for community service. That's, that's the sole objective. It's a purpose-driven social uh, media network. With the question on how can we scale our civic activities we see in Sri Lanka and around the world, um, we, we see. Because one of the biggest issues that the world is currently facing is we, the current systems and tools that are available to scale um, global as well as local coordination to address local or global challenges are inefficient, unsustainable, mm -hmm. and unscalable. So with that in mind, I, I want to try and come up with, I want to present a set of tools with a different business model that is not dependent on monetizing our attention that can bring people together, present them with a, a range of complex challenges that, have been, that has been posted by charities, uh, non-profit organizations, community organizations, or and even government agencies, um, so that people can choose how and best to get involved in civic activities. So that's that's the basic premise of it. How can we connect people who want to do good in the society with the organizations and entities that need those, uh, those people's support and those resources? But uh, the term doing good is a very vague term. You know, mm. what is good to me is not uh, perceived as good by someone else. So what is the criteria? Now, if I'm a user of your social media or your networking platform, okay, I, I see uh, a certain thing as a good thing, but uh, the others don't look at it the same way. So how do you make, make, make that distinction? How, what's the criteria? So in, in very simple terms, this is uh, a platform for volunteers, charities, donors to come together. Um, whether it's planting trees or cleaning the beaches or even sharing their skills and knowledge. Um, so there can be experts in a certain domain who want to voluntarily share their experience as well as their knowledge with uh, charities or government agencies or other uh, institutions to move humanity, move the society forward. So we have terms and conditions. We, we want to try and uh, make sure that we kind of nudge people towards doing good instead of um, creating harm. Mm. Uh, and again, as you said, it's, it's, uh, it can change from community to community. But the basic principle is uh, they need to make sure that it is not violating any um, um, rules of that um, community or that country needs to make sure that it's not mentally, emotionally, physically hurting anyone. Mm -hmm. 
as well as it needs to make sure that it, it abides by the terms and conditions of the platform that we have uh, uh, that we have outlined and need to make sure that it is genuinely addressing the cause that they are trying to address so that we can try and curtail some of the exploitative behavior that um, we see sometimes in the society. So yes, this, this is um, in some ways this could be um, framed as a grand experiment uh, in terms of how can we come up with a system that brings people together, gives them the opportunity to identify shared concerns, shared values, shared beliefs, and then collectively address these issues in a way that we can scale because time is running out. And uh, right now I do see that lots of uh, individuals, organizations, and um, agencies and countries are in a competitive behavior. They are deploying competitive behaviors. So we have de uh, designed this platform to encourage collaborative behavior. See, Harin, the one, one key problem uh, that we see across the world is that people have lost faith in goodness. Uh, people believe that uh, you know, no one can be good. I mean, if mm. there's something good is happening and if somebody is doing good, uh, people tend to think that there's some kind of agenda behind it, mm -hmm. some kind of an ulterior motive behind it. Mm -hmm. So humanity at large has, I think, lost faith in goodness. Mm -hmm. So in that context, uh, how viable is it to have a social media or social networking platform mm -hmm. that is focused on goodness? Um, I think it's, uh, it is viable and I think that is going to be, only time will tell in terms of the success of this platform. I'm not going to say that, yes, I, I have figured out everything for sure and this is for sure is going to be the silver bullet or the, or the magic portion. But having said that, when, when human beings are cornered to, uh, when their backs are on, against the wall, they try to understand, okay, why are these things are happening, trying to understand the root causes and try to figure out a way to come together to address those root causes. Right now, as you said, that a lot of the issues are stemming from distrust. People have lost trust in institutions, in entities, and the traditional systems. This is why we are seeing a shift in terms of the trust is being shifted from institutions and entities and systems towards individuals. We see with the rise of uh, influencer culture and personality cult like personality, so people are resorting to that because they feel like, okay, fine, at least you are consistent or at least you're consistent in your inconsistency mm -hmm. right you're consistently lying mm -hmm. right um, so so in a, in a highly polarized world with lots of uncertainty people are aching for certainty and one of the things I strongly believe is that in order to build trust volunteering is going to be a key ingredient because when we actually encounter human beings in a in in an actual uh, personal level or face to face in real life without a digital layer it allows human beings to experience the full range of human emotion now when that happens and when that energy is put towards addressing a issue in a society in a community and when they achieve that that's a great way of building trust so imagine a day where people from Colombo or people from Batiklo or people from uh, Anuradhapura or Jaffna or Mana going to the other side of the country to contribute their time, their energy, their skill sets and their wisdom and, and exchange knowledge so that we understand each other's, each community's challenges that they fa uh, face. And then that's a great way for us to understand the underlining common um, challenges that we as a society are facing. Now, as you said, the people have distrust uh, because they are, we are constantly exposed to negative news, bad news. Because uh, news is not a randomized sample of what happened yesterday. It is a, it is a sample of what, uh, what are the worst things that happen in a society and it is uh, put in front of you. Now with social media, how the algorithms are designed, they're they are designed to optimize your time on those platforms. In order for them to optimize your time on that platform, they need to show you things that will 
uh, create fear, fear mongering, polarization, insecurities. We see that with lots of depression as well as uh, uh, in individuals feeling uh, uncomfortable about their own uh, self image. So they are constantly being bombarded with that type of content to remind you how behind you are compared to the other individual. So you're constantly checking how many likes that person has had uh, compared to you. You're in this constant, um, you're reminded of how bad your life is, which leads to more uncertainty, which leads to people looking for better echo chambers and social media platforms are providing that on a silver platter. Hey, this is what it is. Here's a bunch of people who agree with your biases and your worldview. And you say something and then they, they say, oh, okay, fine, I, I have this figured out. All of a sudden, somebody else comes with a different worldview. My goodness, they cannot handle that. So they cannot handle friction in any way because we have been now trialing this massive experiment, social experiment for the last 10, 15 years with how we consume information, how we collaborate with each other, and how we um, communicate with each other, all because of these uh, platforms. I'm not saying only social media, but social media is a huge contributor because of the network effects that is happening and how it's leveraged. It's freely, freely available. Uh, most countries are uh, uh, offering social media, the, the mainstream social media platforms as free. And then the question is, why are these things are offered as free? Who's paying for the data? Which companies are paying for it? And what's the responsibility of a government, of the big telcos, in terms of um, giving these things for free? Because how is it shaping? Democracies around the world are actually at risk right now. Open societies are at risk simply because we are pushed, nudged, encouraged, incentivized for going into our uh, corners. So when we do not have a shared understanding, shared sense making, then we don't have we don't understand that the problems we are in, uh, facing are shared problems. We think that okay, fine, my problem is bigger than your problem, and again comes this competitive behavior. So if you do not have a shared understanding about the problem, you cannot have shared choices. If you don't have shared choices, you don't have shared action. These are all interconnected, all contributing towards deteriorating uh, democracies. And then the alternative is close authoritarian um, government structures. And then if the society at large, if the communities are feeling insecure and they are looking for stability, that we humans want some stability. You want stable weather patterns to do farming. You want a stable government to do businesses. You need to have a uh, stable law enforcement to make sure that you know you are going to be uh, safe. You need to have a stable healthcare system to make sure that if you are sick, they, they are going to take care of it. So in a world filled with instability, people are slowly gravitating towards stability. And if an autocratic leader or authoritarian regime comes and offers that to you, even with all the gaps and, and all the horrible things that comes with it, um, people might actually select that. Because it's chaos in open de democracies versus some sort of um, chaos or some sort of order in, uh, in those uh, democracies. So I think that it's imperative that we as societies, um, and I think Sri Lanka has, a, um, I, I might be biased because I'm a Sri Lankan, I started good people in Sri Lanka, and I'm hoping uh, to have this platform available around the world. But I think Sri Lanka has an opportunity to look at these problems in a different way because one could argue that uh, the, the, the prolification of technology is not to the extent as other countries. So maybe we might have some mm. uh, space to kind of uh, re-evaluate how we as a nation are addressing these challenges that mm. we are going to encounter. Mm. 
uh, Harinda, how can volunteerism help resolve some of Sri Lanka's most pressing problems? Like, you know, for instance, we know under these days, a lot of people have lost their income, livelihood, jobs because of the pandemic. Uh, and it is, it's, a, it's a real concern. So how can volunteerism actually help resolve such problems? Or is it just a water problem in some area or some infrastructure issue in another area? How, how does it actually work? So just to define volunteerism or volunteer action, it's, it's people engaging in activities voluntarily, yeah. uh, free of charge, yeah. without any expectation of remuneration to address a public concern. Okay, so let's say whether we, we take the hunger issue right now with rising uh, food prices. Um, there are lots of people are starving. Um, they are going uh, to bed hungry. Um, now, the first and most um, straightforward thing a lot of people might feel that they can do is making some lunch packets, going around the city and uh, giving it to individuals who are coming from uh, low-income uh, families or uh, daily, age, uh, daily wage earners. So that's a good start. But I think that there are other ways that we can address these things that is not, which will not replace that activity, but will complement that activity. So there can be other individuals who can have a food bank or a soup kitchen. Food bank is pretty much having some, uh, maybe uh, can, Sri Lanka doesn't have a lot of canned uh, foods, so maybe that dry rations available. Or a soup kitchen that is, um, that is create, having prepared meals and saying, okay, every day we will have X much of, uh, we will be able to cater to this many people. Um, th there might be individuals who are looking at the distribution system of food. How can we come up with ways to address distribution challenges, storage challenges, so that we can reduce the waste in terms of food. Um, there might be individuals who are doing research about these uh, issues. There might be in individuals who are lobbying politicians um, to change certain uh, policies. The question is, we should not be uh, prioritizing this action is superior than this action. We need to come up with a way that we deploy all these activities, these actions, that in a way that it complements each other's actions. Because some people, they actually have challenges in terms, in terms of uh, their availability, because they have other financial or other uh, social commitments. So that's fine. Some people might want to volunteer once a year and some people might have the time and the resources and the mental and emotional space to volunteer every day or every week. So uh, this is where, and I, and I, and I sincerely hope that uh, the audience here will uh, consider uh, going to good people, which is gudppl.com. Uh, uh, we, we've actually uh, recently introduced um, a feature called campaigns. So the idea behind that is that you have an overarching problem, like an um, umbrella problem, and any group that is uh, doing activities or projects that is connected to that uh, overarching problem, they can link it to the campaign. So you as a volunteer or a donor can go, click on that campaign, go through the, all the available opportunities to volunteer, whether it's in a space of uh, volunteering in a soup kitchen or going around the uh, city and delivering uh, lunch packets, whatever it might be. And if they're all coming together to collectively address uh, hunger, I think that would be a great way of uh, do, uh, doing um, civic act activities. Right now, what is happening is most of these charities, nonprofit organizations, community organizations, and other individuals are posting their activities on social media. Then it becomes a question of competition. Okay, so and so did the same activity, but so and so got more likes than I did. And often those types of behavior is contributing towards um, more donations, more grants, mm -hmm. more visibility. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, even media is going to now latch on to that one individual or one organization saying, okay, you went, you went and did this, which went viral. Tell us more about it. And then they invisibilize all other parties, all other individuals who are doing similar activities or different activities yet addressing the main umbrella issue. And that is demotivating 
those individuals because then all of a sudden all the donors are rushing to this person or this entity, this organization, which is focused on addressing these issues in one particular way. So I, I think we should not have this scarcity, scarcity mindset of saying, okay, this is the way it should be. We should all fight each other for donor funding or grant funding or volunteers. Um, I see that in Sri Lanka and around the world also, this is, this is prevalent. But uh, when they have a group of volunteers, they want to make sure that they, those volunteers do not join other organizations and other nonprofits. And I think that is uh, creating these silos, encouraging competitive behavior. And I think if, they, if, if we allow volunteers as well as organizations to come together and work together and volunteers to cross-pollinate, we will have a better outcome. Mm. Now, I understand that there are challenges that nonprofits face because certain organizations may not have the same value system or same understanding about the problem. But we need to come together and figure out a way what are the common threads that binds us together and start from there versus trying to look at the differences. Because again, I, I, I go back to the social media platforms because what I see and what the world is seeing is increasingly people are interested in making a statement versus making a difference. Now, Harin, the mainstream social media platforms have a very clear revenue model. They monetize their content and they make money. How does your platform make money? How, do, how does your platform monetize its content? How do you, how, how do you plan to make your business uh, sustainable? So, that's a good question. We are a social enterprise. And the idea behind this is that we want to make sure our platform is sustainable and is not designed to monetize people's attention and their anger and the polarization and the hatred towards each other. So how we are presenting our platform right now, we have deployed uh, the free version and eventually we'll have a paid version. So similar to LinkedIn model, they call it the freemium model. You have a free model and the premium model. So the premium model will be available in the coming years. Um, we hope that will generate enough uh, funding to sustain our platform. And one of the reasons I would like to raise that, one of the reasons why we didn't go down the charity path is because we felt like if we were constantly relying on donor funding, we m might, our innovation, our scale, and our vision and our mission and our value system might be compromised or might be curtailed based on the donor's vision. So if we wanted to try and come up with a way that we are not constantly uh, focusing our energy on raising funds. Um, so that's why we thought of um, deploying good people as a social uh, enterprise. And, and just to add to that, uh, the definition of social enterprise is uh, sustainable business with a core mission to address a societal and or environmental issue. So in this case, we want to try and address both. Now we see a trend where a lot of people are trying to move away from uh, the mainstream social media platforms because there's a lot of negativity and toxic content and it really drains your mental energy, right? Is your platform an alternative to that? I mean, is it, is it a good, good place to go to for such people? I, I sincerely hope so, because the, uh, the objective of the platform is that how can we design a social media network that will help the members who are using it in a positive way? How can it help to improve their quality of life? How can we focus on better meaningful connections rather than, uh, rather than having thousands and millions of uh, followers? So that is, uh, that is our objective and uh, time will tell how, how it will actually uh, pan out. People who are using it, uh, people who are using good people right now are um, happy also because we see a lot of people are moving away from mainstream social media platform and, and I hope that this will be a healthy alter alternative that they will consider. Um, this, as I said earlier, this social media platform is a um, social network with a purpose a purpose to bring humans together so that they can actually share experience and do meaningful things, good things. Um, and I jokingly say this uh, sometimes, and I will share this with the audience too. 
uh, our, our business will not thrive if people are addicted to good people uh, platform. That means if they are spending too much time on the app, they are not spending enough time out there volunteering. So I intentionally... See, a lot of people share good causes on their social media platforms that think they have contributed, yeah, right? Yes, and, and, and again, research shows that the minute somebody shares something, they get that uh, micro dopamine hit, feels like they have contributed to the cause, and um, often they are then not taking the next step, which is actually going and participating in the activity. Uh, and that's that's the uh, biggest uh, issue that a uh, lot of the volunteers and a lot of the charities are facing is because they feel like okay fine we have shared content and we are contributed uh, we are contributing towards this already saturated information uh, uh, sphere and I think it's not really doing any good in the long run because okay fine we are aware about, about the problem about what's next. And that's the part that's missing. So that's why we have designed this platform to uh, to get people out into the community, off the devices, and then that will be. We are hoping that will be a great opportunity for people to learn about humanity, learn about the problems, so that they are better informed about the local issues. And if I, if you have time, I'll give you a quick example. If there are two teams, one team is, let's say, they are team A and team E. Team A has 100 people volunteering, going and cleaning the beach. Each of them are collecting two kilos uh, of plastic, and they have 200 uh, kilos of plastic. And team B has only 10 people collecting two uh, kilos of pa uh, plastic, and it has only 20. Now, if team B continues to volunteer every weekend for 52 weekends, that's one full year, Cumulative plastic that they have collected would be 1,040 kilos worth of plastic. However, even if they post those um, projects every weekend on social media, that will, the likelihood of that getting any virality will be low compared to the other one because the other one will have 100 people tagged on it and the plastic uh, uh, mound will be uh, larger. And unfortunately, that is then incentivizing that type of behavior by no means I'm saying that behavior is bad or this behavior is su superior team a will be more intimate about the issue likelihood of them raising this issue with their local counselors local authorities will be higher they will know which time of the year there's more plastic on the beach because of monsoon rains or whatnot they will be more uh, they will be more passionate in terms of finding a solution, a meaningful, sustainable solution. So the issue is often we would see then the donors, grant uh, funders and others will rally and the media will rally around that uh, type of behavior, which will only result in one of things again. I'm not saying that is bad, that is needed uh, during a disaster, maybe, you know, the uh, feeding people example, the soup kitchen is needed, but during a disaster, we need a lot of people bringing lots of food to the people who need that. But I think we need to be generous in terms of our attention as well as our appreciation so that we can bring these different types of activities together so that we can actually move forward as a human race. Thank you very much, Harinder, for your Interesting viewpoints, and I'm sure you Thank inspire you. a lot of people who want to do good in Sri Lanka. Join us for another segment of Change Makers next week.